Hello everyone. It's been kind of a long time since I've updated, mainly because of disaster after disaster after disaster after disaster. Uh, I'm going to touch on a few things on this gorgeous day. It is freaking 40 degrees. Oh yeah. This is the warmest day of the year here in good old Minnesota. Um, Take a look at the greenhouse. I've got things up and running. It's, uh, it's raining in here pretty hard. Um, I'll just kind of give you a quick tour here. Um, these are zucchinis. Um, it's been a little cold though, so they haven't taken kindly to uh, the treatment that they've been getting. Uh, cantaloupe here. Again, uh, some kind of this is either a nutrition uh, deficiency or it's just the cold weather we've had. I don't know, but uh, here's some snow. Uh, I'm just trying to fill up the pond more, and uh, hey, free rainwater. It's just melting down into the plant bed. This is also where I have some spinach seedlings. I'd have to dig down pretty deep to find them, though. They're somewhere in there, I promise. Yeah. Anyway, um, these small ones are various uh, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, that kind of stuff. They do well in the cold. I just transplanted these last week. Um, they've taken kindly. Here's uh, peppers that I transplanted from inside. Um, again, I don't know, uh, if there's nutrient deficiency or if it's cold, because they're obviously not cold weather plants, but, uh, my bell siphon right now, it's, uh, emptying, uh, 74 degrees in here, the humidity's kind of high though, uh, this is, why I'm leaning against the notion of there being a nutrient deficiency because I think these are cauliflower. I put these out here two weeks ago. They're doing fantastically. Uh, these are sunflowers. They're going to be uh, 12 feet tall when they're done, so obviously I'll be transplanting them um, when I can. And then uh, yeah, these are garlic. So I just kind of put a garlic in the gravel and it started growing roots and so I separated the cloves and I planted them individually so it's kind of doing really well out here. Um, and then this is the pond. I have a small amount of water in there because uh, well the less water you have the more nutrient saturated it is but either way there's just not enough fish in there right now i have goldfish and one koi somewhere in there it's not enough to just you know there's not enough poop going around but uh yeah um there's a venturi i put a piece of a towel with a zip tie it has to be a neon zip tie or else it won't work um and i got venturi going I don't know if you can see the fine bubbles, but uh, got that kind of perfected. Even when uh, I cut off the water to the filter, so 100% of the water is going to the Venturi, still got a fine mist of bubbles. No big ones, just a massive amount of fine oxygenation. I plan on having a lot of fish in here and fish like to breathe so yep I uh, usually keep this down because that cuts back on the humidity in the greenhouse uh, and then here's uh, my solar heater that I made basically it's uh, behind glass plexiglass and then I spray painted some soup cans Actually, black olive cans and bean cans, if you want to be specific. 
they absorb the heat and then a three watt computer fan that I wired to a uh, Super Nintendo cord um, that's plugged in and stuff so the air just kind of comes up and goes out that pipe and then it comes out as uh, fairly warm air um, it's not as effective as it could be in the greenhouse is my guess if it was out Side, the temperature difference would be much more, but uh, certainly helps as far as uh, getting the heat going. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the quick tour. Um, I'm going to try and uh, talk you through a few of the problems I encountered because they were really big ones. Pretty awful. Um, the problem started when uh, <clears throat> I was using tap water to... Uh, put into the pond and uh, I was just using chemicals to get rid of the chloramine because chloramine doesn't just come out of the water eventually like chlorine does. Chloramine needs to be treated with a chemical or uh, a type of uh, acid that's in oranges but I didn't know that. But anyway I had to empty out the pond so I emptied the entire pond except for about two inches and then I filled the rest up with snow because hey that's rainwater score uh, kill all the goldfish in that process apparently they don't like going from one extreme temperature to another so that was well I felt a little bad after that hindsight but anyway the 80 degree water that I had was gone and I now had 32 degree water or zero degrees Celsius at best. So what happened is that cold water into the barrel and then overnight we had the coldest night like ever in the world. No, not really, but it was negative 25. So what happened is the valve that I had down here cracked. Don't know if you could see those cracks on the top there. It cracked and the whole pond drained out. Uh, it didn't take long. It's a 2400 gallon an hour pump and it went all over the ground. So I came out in the morning and it was an ice rink. It was uh, it was about 400 gallons of ice on the ground so all that water and goldfish killing and snow shoveling into there I did was wasted so that was cool so instead of a valve on there I just uh, put some silicon and a cap and that's never coming off ever again um, so that just really sucked um, also the one that gave me the most trouble is I originally used a uni seal for the bottom here now it's a bulkhead fitting and I'll tell you why a uni seal um, in in this kind of grow bed with the pond liner on top the water is able to leak past the pond liner and uh, on top of uh, the actual wood so there's there was water leaking from the bed all over down here. Um, so I got a bulkhead fitting and I don't know if you can see down there but uh, when I got the bulkhead fitting it still wasn't good enough. Uh, the, wa the rubber washer that it came with did not do a good enough job of covering up what I needed to get covered up so water still leaked past so I kept having to empty out the plant bed of water just to try and make an attempt at fixing it and I ended up just buying a bathtub drain or a bathtub uh, seal drain plug thing and I cut a washer out of that and I used that and that worked so just massive delays but uh, this has been up and going for two weeks now 
pretty nice. Um, yeah, those are the issues. And that's kind of, uh, oh yeah, I'm going to talk about the, uh, the rain in here. Whenever I shake the greenhouse a little bit, it starts pouring rain. Well, that's because when I leaked 400 gallons of water all over the floor, uh, the ground in the greenhouse is not frozen. It's uh, unfrozen. So uh, the ground around it is frozen. So what I have essentially is a bubble, kind of like an, a capsule of non-frozen ground. So the water that goes through has nowhere to go. So I have this continuous uh, evaporation process happening because the water in the ground, it stays there. It doesn't uh, sink low or anything like that. It just, uh, it's a constant vicious cycle. Um, oh, there's my bell siphon just starting. I want to see how much force. As soon as it gets primed, it'll, uh, kind of take off and okay come on there we go that's why I used inch and a half pipe as opposed to inch pipe I want that water to drain out of there nice and quick anywho yeah so my greenhouse is like a non-frozen haven that the water cannot escape from. So it's not going to be until I can, well, until the ground's unfrozen. It's just going to constantly rain in here, but that's okay. But for my next endeavor, I'm going to get the other plant bed in here. I've got one identical to this one. Um, I'm going to get that in here, so then I'll be at full capacity. Right now, uh, I've got in the ranks about 35, 40 t uh, tilapia consisting of multiple generations ready to go into the pond. Um, right now, it's at about 55 degrees Celsius, which is the bare minimum that blue tilapia can live. So I, I do want the weather to get a little bit warmer before I end up putting them in. Until then it's just goldfish all the way. But uh, the tilapia, that's a whole nother fun story. I will get to that in uh, a later entry. Oh, one more thing. Uh, on the cold nights I kind of have this greenhouse within a greenhouse action. It's quite awesome. It raises the temperature about 10 to 20 degrees normal of what it would be. So if there's going to be an especially horrible night, then I just come out and cover that up. And uh, it's pretty damn handy. Anyway, I feel like I've probably talked your ear off a bit. So uh, my next entry will be about uh, tilapia and how I'm raising them and all that fun stuff. Goodbye.